Maximum speed. Maximum strength. What's up guys? Power GPU here. Hey, guess what? It's been a while since I've done a video. I've been out. I've been a father for a while. I just had my second baby about three, four weeks ago. It was a boy. Um, so I've been pretty busy. Um, I haven't done a build 11 months, which is actually a first for Power GPU. Um, so it's been, I've been taking a break, quite a bit of a well, long break. Um, anyways, the reason why I'm doing this video is because I got a new video card and I am doing a new build. Now since I've been a father with my daughter, she's almost two, and my son now that's three, three weeks old, um, I hadn't had, I guess, the space in my house, as you guys seen in my previous videos, of me having my own room with a huge massive table, my three monitors, or my 47-inch TV. Um, I don't have that anymore. So I got kicked out of my two rooms that I had, completely gone. So now I've gone to a small desk, just a standard desk with a keyboard, a mouse, and a 27-inch monitor. Well, I sold my last machine, the one with the two 680s, the water cooled with the um, with 2700K and stuff like that. I sold that about a week ago. Um, and what I'm doing now is, which again, this is a first for Power GPU. I've never done this. I've never ran one card in any of my builds. It's always been at the minimum two, um, on the average three. Well, what I'm doing now is, since the Titan has come out and since it's performed so well, um, I went ahead and sold my machine. I'm planning to do a micro ATX build, and of course I'm going to water cool it as well, since this card is based off an overclocking for, uh, not TDP, but based off heat, so of course the lower the temperature, the better overclock you will definitely get out of it, um, which I've seen some reviews here and there online and everything is, is you know changing and stuff like that. This is actually, I purchased this from RMP Connect, um, because he actually ordered two of them. Uh, he went and kept one himself. And he went ahead and benchmarked this before I got it, just because I told him to try it out before I bought it from him. And this one actually on the core clock gets to 1,006 automatically, without overclocking or anything. The one he has now gets to 1,096. And then all the reviewers are saying that theirs gets to 876. So there's a slight difference between all the cards and all the reviewers you see out there. When he was benchmarking this, he was on average, because he had two 680s, two still at the house, on average, he was about 4 to 5 FPS less than the 2680s, which for a single GPU card, that's amazing. So I have a smaller desk space. I need to keep it nice and small, but at the same time, I don't want to get a small case and have heat issues. So I went ahead and got the Silverstone TG08, which I just got that in on Friday. The rest of my parts will be coming in tomorrow. Um, just to let you know the specs, um, I went ahead and got an i5-3570K instead of the i7 just because I'm running 2560 by 1440 so there's no CPU bottleneck on that aspect as far as the resolution and I will be overclocking the, the i5 as well um, and I will be doing the mod on the actual processor about taking it apart, removing the thermal compound that Intel went cheap on and replacing that to keep the temperatures down. Um, I got the Gigabyte uh, G1 Z77 Sniper and I went ahead and got 8 gigs of 2133 megahertz uh, Corsair Vengeance memory and a Samsung SSD for uh, 840 series 500 gigabyte as well so as you can see, I'm trying to keep everything compact on one SSD, nothing else. I want to keep everything nice and basic. Power supplies-wise, I went with a Corsair HX750, which is all I really need uh, for this card. NVIDIA re re you know, recommends a 600, which is more than enough. Uh, this, and this card does take a 1.6 pin and 1.8 pin. All right, so enough of that. Let's go straight to the card. Um, we, at my job at Tiger Direct, we just got in today two EVGA uh, GTX Titans uh, Signature Editions which heads up, if you do get that one, the box is beautiful. Um, it's all black, so the EVG on and silver, it's a beautiful box. Not worth the difference in price since these are all reference cards anyways. Alright, so let's go ahead and get into the box when you're ready. Uh, let's go ahead and open it from the top. As you can see, the box looks just like if you were to order a GTX 680 8 through ASUS. Um, it looks, it's pretty much the identical box, they just reprinted out some stuff on it. Um, same box as far as it comes in all, it just says ASUS, very basic, nothing extreme. And let's go through this real quick. So, drivers in here, I'm not going to use those because those are actually old drivers. NVIDIA came out with newer drivers for the Titan, um, which some of the reviewers I saw were using the old drivers. Don't know why, because uh, they have the newer drivers as well on top of that. 
So let's pull out this guy here real quick. Now, one thing I will tell you this: um, in the video, it's very hard to explain. Um, the aesthetics on this card is probably the best I've seen out of all the cards I've had, and you guys know I've owned a lot of cards in the past five or six years. Um, I even got to the point where I even told RP Connect was because I'm water cooling this card, but it makes me sad because it, it is a beautiful car. Um, I mean, it has a nice see-through acrylic piece here where you can see the actual vapor chamber. This fan, I mean, it's not like your standard fan. It's actually really durable. It looks like it's good quality. I mean, all this is just, I mean, of course, this lights up green, which is nice. The PCB on it, it's full black. It's not that light brown looking color. Um, it, it's just a beautiful, beautiful piece of art that NVIDIA did. I mean, granted, a lot of you guys are saying, it's worth, it's a thousand dollars. You know, why would you get rid of two 680s for one Titan? Well, like I said, this is, this card is really designed, like even NVIDIA said, it's designed for a lot of small form factor machines. Um, it's well worth the money if you want really good performance, um, and of course the VRAM too, um, if you want really good performance in a smaller budget build. Um, now, I can't say budget because it's a thousand dollars anyways, but that didn't, that didn't go well in that sentence. But anyways, so it's, the performance you get is pretty close to two 680s. I, I would say, um, in a lot of the reviews you see online, it's not close to two 680s. But as far as home benchmarks that RP Connect was doing, and I was talking with him at the same time while he was doing these benchmarks, he was literally off, like I said, four to five FPS compared to his two 680s. And on Max Payne 3, he said he was getting the same exact FPS. Now, the other thing you guys need to realize too is it's not how much FPS you get. It's the quality of the, of the FPS you're actually getting. Because a lot of people say, hey, you know, I'm getting 160 FPS. Well, that's great. But if you're constantly dropping at certain points, if you're going up to maximum like 300 FPS, dropping down to 30 FPS, yeah, it's running good, but you're getting some stuttering. You're getting some micro stuttering. What NVIDIA did with this card is it's actually prevented that. This card has enough bandwidth, enough VRAM, so if you're running high resolution, you don't have to worry about that. You're actually getting nice, stable, smooth FPS. One example, when, when RMP Connect was running Far Cry 3, with his 2680s maxed out and everything, he was running around 61 FPS, dropping down to the mid-30s. When he ran with this card, he said he was staying around 51 to 55 at the minimum 49 in the same exact area. So his FPS was a lot closer, which is really what you want to see. Smoother gameplay, smoother performance. Other features that this card offers as far as, you know, the overclocking on the monitors, that's a great feature. It's probably something I'll mess with a little bit later. Not really, not something I'm really interested in. But if it works out, hey, I'll keep doing it, you know, if it's something I really like. Um, I don't want to go too much into detail because I really haven't tested this card out personally myself. I will this week once I get my build up and running. And the reason why I'm with an i5 as well is in gaming performance, the i5 performs the same as an i7. And I wanted to show you this as more of a, you, you guys at home could go out and build an i5 machine because that's more of the price point that people buy. At Tiger Direct, I'm always building machines for, you know, the people that come in looking for Intel processors, they always go with the i5 3570K because it's always the best value for performance. So I want to show you the realistic world thing with a GTX Titan. So you could go out, buy a 200 dollars processor, run a Titan. Of course, granted, I'm not telling you to buy an i5 with a Titan if you're running a 1650 by 1080. That, that I wouldn't recommend. 1920 by 1080 at the minimum. And then if you're running 2560 by 1440 or NVIDIA surround, then that's even better because at that point it's not a lot of CPU intense. Anyways guys, like I said, this was a quick video um, just to give you an update of what I've been doing. Like I said, I've been busy with family, with work, um, and I just wanted to show you this thing in beauty real quick. So stay tuned for some fun videos. Power GPU is back. So I'll be doing a lot of videos for you guys. You guys will enjoy them a lot more. Um, we'll have some fun. Alright guys, see you guys later in the next one guys, and PowerGPU signing out. See ya.